We are live here on Locked On New York Rangers. We are also about a half an hour away from the NHL trade deadline. The Rangers have already pounced to make one move, bring in veteran defenseman Chad Ruedel, but they still need a right winger. Will they pull it off? We count down uh, the final minutes of the trade deadline here on today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers. You're locked on the New York Rangers, your daily podcast on the New York Rangers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, Blue Shirts fans, to episode number 1021 of the Locked On New York Rangers podcast. I'm your host, John Chick. Just want to thank you guys, as always, for making Locked On New York Rangers your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. And we are, of course, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And today's special live episode of Locked On New York Rangers is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. And so obviously some uh, very nervous, very tense moments for all of us Ranger fans right now. I think that by now a lot of us figured that the Rangers would have some kind of a significant deal in place. For sure, they were going to be out there looking for a right winger, and, and they probably still are doing that. But we've seen a lot of you know good options for the Rangers fly off the boards. We've seen some guys resign with their current teams, and that obviously means that they're no longer options for the Rangers. We've seen uh, some right wingers get traded for what I thought were very reasonable prices. It's funny because for a while there, I really thought this would be a seller's market, and early in the game it, it was. Uh, I think certainly when you look at the early returns for players like Sean Monahan, Elias Lindholm, those guys got some pretty significant hauls. But then you see Jake Gensel get traded to the Canes. And I mean, they got a decent amount, the Penguins did, but uh, they seem mostly underwhelmed. You know, Penguin fans and, you know, talking to uh, Hunter and Patrick from uh, Locked On Penguins, they they don't seem to be that thrilled with the return they got. Um, and then the Rangers were rumored to be in on Gensel. I was always a little bit skeptical that anything would be happening there. But yeah, it's getting pretty late in the game here. We are T minus 28 minutes away from the NHL trade deadline. And of course, uh, we're going to be hanging out here, just chilling. Uh, tell your friends about it. Come hang out. Uh, you guys can vent if you have to. I know there's some people that are not very happy with Chris Drury right now. I, I think the best thing to do, though, is probably just to wait and see what happens between now and the trade deadline. I figure we can kick off today's very special live episode, though, by talking about the one player that we do know that the Rangers have acquired, and that is uh, veteran defenseman Chad Ruedel from the Pittsburgh Penguins. They also made a uh, minor league deal where uh, they sent Turner Ellison for Nick Patan, Pitan, not even sure how to pronounce his name. Uh, I think that deal's fine, but again, you hope these aren't the biggest moves that the Rangers make uh, between now and the deadline at 3 o'clock a little bit later today. As for Chad Ruedel, though, you know, this is not exactly the uh, the deal that I think a lot of us were hoping that the Rangers and Penguins might strike because, again, Jake Gensel was out there and uh, it was pretty obvious that he was going to be moved. Uh, I think this trade in and of itself, though, is completely fine for the Rangers. I'd even call it a good trade. It's just, again, not the most impactful trade that you hope the Rangers make between now and 3 o'clock today. But you pick up Chad Ruedel, all you give up, is a fourth round draft pick in 2027. So uh, the Rangers basically get him for nothing. I saw some people losing their minds about this and it's really not worth getting that uh, worked up for. It's sort of par for the course from what we've seen from Chris Drury the last you know couple of trade deadlines here. Obviously, third straight year here where the Rangers are going to be buyers. And if you remember two years ago, Drury went out and got Justin Braun, you know, a veteran defenseman, wanted to put him on the third pairing. And mercifully, that allowed... Uh, Patrick Nemeth to become a healthy scratch, you know, heading into the playoffs that year. He played a couple of playoff games, but uh, for the most part, Nemeth uh, was out of the lineup at that point. Braun did okay. And same thing last year, you know, they go out and get Tarasenko, but of course, Nico Mikola was also the throw in. I mean, I, I shouldn't even call him a throw in because he, you know, is a solid defenseman and did a good job with the Rangers, but they got uh, Mikola and he ended up playing on the third pairing as well for the Rangers. So bring in Chad Ruido. Again, it's not uncommon to see Drury go out and get a defenseman that can be like your fifth defenseman, your sixth defenseman, your seventh defenseman. And uh, he does just that again here uh, with Chad Ruedel striking a deal 
with the Pittsburgh Penguins. The other thought that I had here as it pertains to bringing in Ruedel is, and I don't know how likely this actually is, but is it at least possible that the Rangers might be working on some other deal where they trade one of their defensemen? I mean, would they consider giving away a Braden Schneider or a Keandre Miller in exchange or as part of a deal for like Frank Vetrano? I don't see them doing that. I really don't. I wanted to at least throw out the possibility, though, if the Rangers do move on from a defenseman on their roster between now and the deadline, now 25 minutes away for those of you scoring at home. But if they do that, I think it's most likely to be Zach Jones. We did an episode, uh, I want to say, a little bit earlier this week, kind of early in the week, where I took a look at um, you know the most likely players on the Rangers' current roster and in their system to be traded. I had Zach Jones at the top of that list, and it's nothing against Zach Jones. I think you know he's a solid defenseman. We've seen him play well at times, but... The biggest thing, as we talked about with Jones, that he brings to the table is offense. And the Rangers get a lot of offense out of their defense. And it's not just Adam Fox. Obviously, he's the one leading the charge. But to me, Zach Jones seems a little bit more valuable to another team than he might be to the Rangers. And maybe, you know, if the Rangers are trying to get Vetrano here between now and the deadline, maybe Zach Jones uh, is part of the package. Jones in a first for Vetrano. I mean, does that work? Can we do that? Can the Ducks, you know, uh, sign the dotted line for that? Hard to say for sure. I mean, I would love to see the Rangers add Vetrano, especially now with the other options dwindling. But, you know, the uh, asking price is said to be high for Vetrano, as it should be. He was an all-star this year, has 30 goals or, you know, somewhere in that ballpark. And, um, you know, he's under contract next season. So the Ducks are not in a position where they absolutely uh, must trade him. Getting back to Ruedel here, though, uh, a couple other things I wanted to hit on before we kind of shift our attention to other things happening at the zero hour here. Um, so... Playoff experience, you know, that kind of depends on your philosophy as, as far as the playoffs go, how important is experience. But for somebody, uh, Ruedel, who's been along, uh, around as long as he has, doesn't have as much playoff experience as you might think. He had uh, parts of four seasons with the Sabres, then parts of seven seasons with the Penguins. Only 25 playoff games for Ruedel, and he's got zero points in those 25 games, and there's also a minus three. His last trip to the playoffs, Ranger fans will remember this fondly, was as a member of the Pittsburgh Penguins two seasons ago. Uh, he played all seven of those games and uh, was a plus two during that series. And of course, the Rangers uh, win game seven with Artemi Panarin scoring in overtime. So uh, not as much experience as you might expect from somebody, uh, you know, a 33-year-old. The other question I had, you know, after they acquired Ruedel is, you know, if all the defensemen stay intact for the Rangers, how do they handle the third line pairing? Now, I feel like, it's probably going to be still Chad Ruedel as the odd man out because you've got three players basically for two spots. You know, the top four, you know, people have things to say every now and then about Truba or about Miller or even about Fox or Lindgren. I, I feel like every Ranger defenseman is going to hear it from this fan base at one time or another. Um, but even with that being the case, we know those four guys are going to be in the lineup, uh, assuming they don't do anything completely insane and trade one of those guys uh, between now and the deadline here. Um, but that being the case, that means you've got three defensemen for two spots. You've got Gustafson, you've got Schneider, and you now have Ruedel. I don't think that uh, Ruedel would bump either of those two guys out of the lineup. And and for what it's worth, Ruedel is a right defenseman. So if it was going to be one or the other, and we assume that nobody changes positions, I guess it would be Schneider. But I don't see the Rangers doing that. Schneider's another defenseman. He comes under fire from Ranger fans every now and then too. But overall, I think he was a nice draft pick for the Rangers and you know, just past the uh, the two-year mark as far as, you know, cumulative calendar years in the NHL. You know, Brandon Schneider is just past two years. And overall, I think he's done a nice job. Sure, there's a hiccup every now and then that you would expect from a 22-year-old defenseman who, who's still getting started in his career. But for the most part, I do think he's been a good player uh, for the Rangers. So Ruido here is here, rather, uh, I think just for depth. You know, you look at uh, the playoffs and how everything kind of lines up. I mean... You never know what's going to happen when it comes to postseason hockey, and there's no sure bet that your top six defensemen are all going to make it through the playoffs completely unscathed. It's probably a good thing that they have somebody there. Again, not a ton of playoff experience for Ruedel, but you know certainly a ton of experience in general. And I just get the feeling that if they're in a pinch, somebody gets hurt, whatever the situation might be, I feel like the Rangers at this point, even if Zach Jones stays here past the deadline, I get the feeling they might turn to Ruedel before they uh, turn to Zach Jones. And I wanted to, uh, you know, kind of get the skinny on Ruedel because, you know, certainly at this point, you know, I, I think a lot of us know 
who Ruedel is. I mean, he's been on the Penguins for long enough, and we know how that rivalry has gone. So certainly we've been familiar uh, with their roster. But I wanted to go ahead and uh, turn to the experts themselves. I Right after the deal was struck between the Rangers and the Penguins, and of course Ruedel comes in to the Rangers, I reached out to both Hunter and Patrick from Locked On Penguins, and big thanks to those guys for getting back to me so quickly. Uh, maybe at some point we'll do a crossover episode or at least a segment where we ask them a little bit more about Ruedel. But I just asked them, you know, what, what's up with Ruedel? You know, what can we expect? And uh, these are their responses. And again, big thanks to those guys for getting back so quickly. Uh, this is what Hunter had to say. Really good in his own zone. Steady 6-7 guy. Obviously, 6 or 7 defenseman. Steady 6-7 guy who can defend well and kill penalties. You're not going to notice him that much, which is also good. But he's been really underrated throughout the last several years. So a pretty high endorsement there from our good friend Hunter Hodes at Locked on Penguins. And then uh, Patrick, just a couple minutes later, added in with this. He's an extremely consistent bottom pairing defenseman. He'll never wow you. But when you get to the end of the season and the playoffs, you'll look back on his body of work and realize he was rock solid, rarely makes mistakes, always makes a smart play, and is very valuable on the PK. So both of them uh, really putting over his work on the penalty kill. And... You know, the Rangers have good defensemen right now, and, and they have guys that I think they would still go to, you know, before Ruedel. I mean, we don't even know if Ruedel's going to be in the lineup. My guess is that he's probably not. But if they're in a pinch and a defenseman goes down and they got to put him in, uh, probably a good call that he'd be seeing some time uh, on the penalty kill. And then I follow up, followed up and I asked them if, because um, because Ruedel is listed as a right winger. So I followed up and I asked them, like, does he ever play the left side or he's strictly right? And uh, Hunter got back to me, and he said mostly just the right. So it does sound like he's, uh, for the most part, a right defenseman. Doesn't mean you can't ever, you know, move guys around, uh, put this left defenseman on the right side, vice versa, whatever the case might be. Uh, we saw, you know, Justin Braun came over here a few years ago, and honestly, I forget which side at this point. But he moved from what was, you know, his predominant side to the other side, and uh, that went just fine. You know, and, and not that Braun was like a superstar, but I thought he did a decent job uh, as a rental for the Rangers. So. Yeah, that's kind of uh, my thoughts on Ruido. Again, I think it's a harmless enough pickup here. I got to go ahead and uh, refresh my Twitter feed, and I see a lot of you guys are leaving some comments as well. I want to, uh, okay, try, guys, try to keep it PG in the comments section. I, I noticed an F-bomb right away here. Uh, I do like my job at Locked On and would like to keep it. So try to keep it PG. I understand some people are upset, but uh, try to keep the language as, as clean as you possibly can right now. So anyway, let's go ahead. I'm uh, going to keep everything rolling here. going to, Take a look at, you know, what's left. We got 18 minutes before the deadline. Uh, see if anything is, is happening, what the latest reports are. We will uh, get to that in just a second here. First, though, we definitely would like to let everybody know that today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers is brought to you by Factor. Eating better is easy with Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian approved and ready to go in just two minutes. You'll have over 35 different options to choose from every week, including Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. Also, there are more than 60 add-ons to help you stay fueled up and feeling good all day long. What are you waiting for? Get started and get after your goals. Two-minute meals fuel up fast with Factors, restaurant-quality meals that are ready to heat and eat whenever you are, pancake smoothies, and more. Discover a wide variety of easy options for the entire day, like breakfast, midday bites, and more. No prep, no mess meals. Factor meals are ready to heat and eat, so there's no prepping, cooking, or cleanup needed. Head to factormeals.com slash LockedOnNHL and use code LockedOnNHL50 to get 50% off. That's code LockedOnNHL50 at factormeals.com slash LockedOnNHL50 to get 50% off. All right, we just want to go ahead and thank everybody, as always, for tuning in to the special live edition of Locked On New York Rangers and making Locked On New York Rangers your first listen every day. Also want to let everybody know that Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today, now available on the free Fire TV channels app. 
All right, so if you guys will just uh, bear with me for a second here on this special live edition of Locked on New York Rangers. First of all, thanks for tuning in. This is a lot of fun, and uh, it'll be a lot more fun if the Rangers land a big-time impact right winger between now and the trade deadline. But if you'll bear with me for just a second, I got to go ahead and do what I'm sure a lot of you are frantically doing right now. I'm doing the same thing, just updating my Twitter and trying to figure out if, if anything is percolating here uh, with the Rangers and not seeing anything right away here. Uh, there was... Uh, a report that Emily Kaplan had not too long ago where it sounds like, you know, they're looking at Frank Vitrano, but the asking price is high. Pat Verbeek is the GM over there. He said to have a very high asking price. And uh, Emily Kaplan does not seem to believe that a deal is going to get done. Something that I tweeted not too long ago, and I'll, I'll mention it here as well for anybody that might've missed it. Chris Drury, I feel like for better or worse, he has a certain threshold that he's not going to go beyond when it comes to basically any trade for any player with the Rangers in any kind of a situation, he'll go up to a certain point, but then he draws the line in the sand and he's not going to go faster. And on one hand that makes him a tough negotiator. And I think that tactic has worked well for him in the past. You know, the Rangers have been able to bring in some really good players for not a whole lot in return the last couple of deadlines. But I also wonder now if, you know, other GMs around the league are starting to get wise to that, that that's how he kind of, uh, you know, operates and that he under no circumstances will make a better offer, will increase his offer, will improve his offer for whatever player might be available uh, than the one that he initially presents. And if that's the case, then maybe these rival GMs are saying, you know what, that's how he is. He's not going to budge. Let's go try to shop this player somewhere else. And that might be what we're seeing here. Um, you know, there's a lot of players that, again, I think would have been good fits for the Rangers they have uh, fallen off the board here. I mean, we'll kind of do a rundown here as far as guys that are still out there and uh, guys that are no longer out there. I, I do want to talk about the Gensel trade a little bit too because I know there's some Ranger fans upset that they weren't able to make that happen. You know, some of my top picks coming into today, I mean, you can start with Frank Vetrano. I, I think you guys know, the everydayers for sure know, uh, that he was up there pretty much heading into the trade deadline this season. Uh, obviously, there was chemistry between him and Mika Zibanejad and Chris Kreider. He's just kind of a personal favorite of mine. And something else that's big for me about Frank Vitrano is that you will have him if you trade for him, which I don't know that the Rangers are going to do it at this point, but we'll see. But if you do, you've also got him for next year. He won't be a uh, pure strict rental. And you got to figure that the trade deadline or the trade deadline window, the uh, the Stanley Cup window would still be open you know, for next season as well. So Frank Vitrano would be there. That would solve, at least for this year and next year, that would solve your issues as far as top line right wing is concerned. I, I would love to bring him in. Um, an honorable mention that I'll throw out there too. The reason I don't really include him in this list is because I just don't believe he's available. But Alex Tuck, we've talked about him a little bit on this podcast in the past. For me, I just don't see why Buffalo would even consider trading him. He's, he's still a young player, 27 years old, one of those guys that gets better and better with every single passing season. And with that being the case, I mean, if you're Buffalo, he's under contract for a good amount. Why trade him, right? I mean, that that just doesn't really make any sense. I guess never say never. And sometimes, you know, over the years, it, it's fair to wonder if the Sabres really know what they're doing. But they're in a much better place right now than they've been in, in a long time. And I don't see how dealing Alex Tuck, one of the guys you got in the Eichel trade, would make you any better. So I just don't see that as a realistic possibility, not just for the Rangers, but really any team. Um, you guys let me know. I mean, I, again, I'm trying to keep an eye on social media and do this show live at the same time. So if anything happens, uh, you guys definitely let me know. I'm going to go. Okay. Again, guys, please try to keep it. Try to keep it PG in the comments section. There, there's an A double crooked yet letter over there. And uh, we just want to keep things clean. This is a family show. Keep things PG. You can maybe get away with a damn or a hell, but let's try to keep it uh, at that at the most. Um, yeah, I mean, it, right now it, it's looking like, uh, no trade is imminent for the Rangers and, um, we're, we're kind of just waiting in the wings here. We got 12 minutes to go for the deadline. Another guy that I would throw out there that I was certainly interested in. And another guy that would be a reunion is Pavel Buchnevich. Um, he's under contract next year as well. Again, that's big for me. That window would stay open. I just don't know that that would happen though. I mean, you've got jury who, I mean, I just got done talking about how stubborn he can be and how much he can really kind of dig in when it comes to what he'll give up in these trades. I mean, do any of us really think that he's going to admit that he was wrong a couple of years ago and uh, go back out there and reacquire a player in Pavel Buchnevich and give up a King's ransom for him when all he had to do was just not trade him? And again, you know, going back to that Buchnevich trade, I didn't like it at the time. I at least understood the logic, but that's that's far and away easily the worst trade that uh, Chris Drury has made 
as his uh, or during his tenure as the Ranger GM. Another guy that I really liked, and he was kind of uh, an emerging candidate for the Rangers in the recent you know couple of days here, really just the last 24 or 36 hours, I would say, is Tyler Toffoli. He goes to the Winnipeg Jets for just a second rounder and a third rounder. Uh, the Devils also retain half of his salary. I would have given that up for Toffoli. I know that now, you know, they don't have second round picks because they keep trading them and they use a second round pick to get Winberg the other day. Um, but just in theory, you know, that that's something I would give up for Toffoli. High energy player. You know, he seems to produce anywhere he goes. Has had success in the playoffs. 88 playoff games, 44 points. And, you know, we know we, watching this team this year, it feels like Mika and Kreider, there's certain nights where they have a, Tough time finding that fifth gear. And I, I just feel like a high energy player like Tyler Toffoli would kind of keep them honest out there, but obviously they're not getting him. Uh, Jordan Eberly, you know, he's somebody that I was interested in uh, from the Kraken. Unfortunately, he signs a two year extension with Seattle worth $4.75 million. So he's off the board as well. Kyle Ocposo, I mean, not the most exciting option on the table. But somebody that, you know, as a depth piece wouldn't be such a bad thing. He goes to the Florida Panthers, and it's in exchange for just a seventh round draft pick. And that seventh becomes a fifth if the Panthers win the Stanley Cup. Um, but, you know, I mean, I don't know. I, again, it's really hard to get that excited about Kyle Ocposo at this point in his career. But you see him going for for literally nothing. I mean, it's a seventh round pick. And if you win the Stanley Cup in your Florida, I'm sure you're more than happy to have that bump up to a fifth round pick, but they don't get him. Uh, one that is really going to bother me is Jason Zucker. Not that he's a superstar, not that he's like this slam dunk hall of famer or anything like that. He's not, but he gets traded from the coyotes to the predators in exchange for a six round pick. And when that happened, that's when I start thinking like, okay, if Zucker got dealt for just a six rounder, the Rangers have to do something. They have to go out and get somebody. They have to go out and land themselves a right winger before this deadline occurs because there's no excuse for not getting Zucker for, you know, the, the who, who was it? The Predators gave up a six-round pick for him. You can't give up a fifth-round pick if you're the Rangers. Now, I also realize part of the, the reasoning there as far as why uh, the Predators got him for only a six-rounder is because there was no salary retained by the Coyotes. And I get that, but... You know, if you're the Rangers, give them a fifth rounder at 50% retained. Or if that doesn't get the job done, give them a fourth rounder at 50% retained. You can't tell me that the Coyotes wouldn't prefer to pick, you know, two rounds higher in the fourth round rather than the sixth round if the only thing they have to do is just retain half of uh, Zucker's salary for the rest of the year. And I realize they're not exactly the most profitable team in the league. I get that. But still, you got to think that they would um, have preferred you know, the fourth rounder at 50% retained rather than a six rounder at nothing retained. I, I don't know that for sure. I'm not their GM, but that's kind of just my, my logic there. Um, I do believe Riley Smith is still out there. You know, he could be an option for the Rangers and somebody that, you know, we'll, we'll talk about him in just a second. Um, we're going to talk about a player that uh, the Rangers have been linked to. He's somebody that I feel like I probably like this player uh, more than a lot of uh, people watching this, probably more than a lot of uh, Ranger fans on the Twitter verse and what have you. But uh, we will discuss that player in just a second. First, though, we definitely would like to let everybody know that today's episode of Locked On New York Rangers is brought to you by Indeed. No matter how the last game went, anytime you take the field, you've got a shot at greatness. Give your team the best shot at winning by recruiting more MVPs with Indeed. If you're hiring, you need Indeed because Indeed is the hiring partner where you can attract, interview, and hire all in one place, and Indeed is the only job site where you're guaranteed to find quality applications that meet your must-have requirements or else you don't pay. Instead of spending hours on multiple job sites hoping to find candidates with the right skills, you need one powerful hiring partner that you or that can help you do it all. With Instant Match, as soon as you sponsor a post, you get a short list of quality candidates with resumes on Indeed that match your job description, and you can invite them to apply right away. Plus, you only pay for quality applications that meet your must-have requirements. Start hiring right now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash locked on. Offer valid through March 31st. Go to Indeed.com slash locked on to claim your $75 Credit before March 31st, indeed.com slash locked on. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire. You need Indeed. 
And uh, once again, just want to thank you guys for, for tuning in here. If you happen to be new here, I'm sure we got some of the everydayers listening, but we recently had our 1000th episode. Please be sure to give this video a like and a subscription as well. We cover the Rangers five days a week on this show. Every single week, we don't take any days off. It's a ton of fun. Typically episodes are, you know, 20 to 35 minutes, you know, somewhere in that ballpark. And um, we're probably gonna go a little bit longer than that today. But um, yeah, it's awesome to have some new viewers. And for the people that show up every day, you guys are the best. Uh, just just keep doing that. It is, it is very much appreciated. And uh, I do want to get to some of your comments in just a second. Uh, first, though, let me go ahead and update everything all over again, because I want to find out if the Rangers are going to do something. It'd be nice if they did. But right now they're not. So that's kind of where we're at. Nothing on the uh, NHL Trade Tracker channel on NHL.com or the web page, rather. Um, let's see what else we got here. And then there is a player that, that's out there, and it sounds like uh, the Rangers might still be in on him. And that player, I'm going to talk about him right now, is Max Pacioretty. Now, again, I feel like I'm probably a bigger fan of this move than a lot of other people. I mean, look, he's not my top choice, not even close. I, I feel like you know there, there were players that could have been had if you want to go all the way back to you know Elias Lindholm. Sean Monahan was available. Those are the guys that got traded early in the trade deadline season. We've seen Drury pounce early in deadline season. Obviously, he didn't do that this year. Uh, Frank Petrano, Pavel Buchnevich, Jordan Eberle. I mean, the list goes on and on. I'm not even sure Patch Reddy, he might barely be in my top 10 just because I don't think you have to give up next to anything uh, to get him. Obviously, there are some very, very serious injury concerns there. So that being the case, I mean, that that's a little bit of a red flag, but if it gets down to the point where it's patch ready or nobody, I will certainly uh, take Max patch ready on this team. It wasn't really that long ago where he was still, you know, a really good player in this league. Uh, he's been heating up a little bit with the Capitals recently for whatever that's worth to anybody. Obviously, again, he's battled a lot of injuries, but as recently as just uh, two seasons ago with Vegas, he only played 39 games, again, injury prone, but 39 games, 19 goals, 18 assists. So he had 37 points in 39 games, playing in a prominent top six role for one of the best teams in the NHL. He was also a plus eight. And this guy can flat out shoot. I mean, again, he is older. He's 35 years old now, but he is a heck of a sniper. And the way that, you know, players are just kind of come and gone uh, at that top line right wing spot with Mika and Kreider. I mean, look, the two of them need to play better no matter who's with them at 5v5. But I'm willing to give Pat Reddy a shot. You know, we saw them have success with Frank Vitrano in the past. And what do you think of when you think of Frank Vitrano? He's a shoot first guy, bombs away at the net. Patch Reddy is very much the same way. He's got a heck of a shot uh, when it's on and when he's healthy. So, again, I would take uh, Patch Reddy over just about anybody else. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Um, anything? Uh, somebody on the chat is saying Jack Ross effect to the Rangers. That is not, he is not very high on my, yeah, it looks like this is happening. So he's not super high on my list. Uh, I don't hate the move either. I, I do think it makes makes things makes the Rangers a little bit better. Let me go ahead and update the trade tracker here. Um, yeah, even like I mean, I don't see anything official yet, but even like I'd take Patch Reddy over Jack Roslevic. But let me go ahead and pull up Roslevic's uh, hockey reference page here. We'll kind of go over everything that uh, you know he's done in his career. Obviously, longtime member of the Columbus Blue Jackets and played for the Jets before that. I, I don't know. I It's hard to get excited about Jack Roslevic. I mean, you needed a big-time impact player, I think, at the deadline this year. And, I mean, he's a center, right? Yeah, he's a center. So, what the hell? What, what, <laughs> what would he... How would he even, like, fit into this team? Like, I guess... I mean, if he's a center exclusively, and I'm pretty sure... I mean, Wenberg can play center or right wing, so maybe... Rosovic is your third line center. Do they put then Wenberg at top line right wing? Does Brodzinski and Goodrow, like, are they playing on the fourth line together? Does Goodrow move to one of the wing spots? Do they just feel like they need another center? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> we'll get back to this in a second. I want to wait to discuss it in greater detail uh, until it's officially official. There is one other small deal that the Rangers made a little bit earlier today. I figure we might as well talk about that while we're figuring out if this deal is legit or not. And by the way, we are now just two minutes away from the trade deadline. Um, the Rangers, a little bit earlier today, acquired forward uh, center Nick Patan. Pitan, I'll figure that out later once I, uh, you know, if we ever hear Sam Rosen say it at one time or another, he's very likely heading to the Hartford Wolfpack. But they get Nick Pitan from the Minnesota Wild in exchange for Turner Elson. 
Uh, Ellison, 31-year-old left winger. He's only played three career NHL games. Um, he's been an alternate captain each of the last two seasons with the Wolfpack. Last year, 41 points in 72 games with Hartford. This year, 12 points in 38 games. And then as for Nick Patan, uh, 28-year-old center. He's only five foot nine, 175 pounds. Former second-round pick by the Jets in 2013. Uh, he has played 170 NHL games with the Jets, the Leafs, the Canucks, the Wild, and has seven goals and 28 assists and is a minus 26. I, I feel like this move is fine. It, it's not going to move the needle very much, obviously, but if nothing else, it gives you another center uh, in your pipeline, and um, you can uh, go ahead and, you know, if anything happens, it, it's somebody that at least has some NHL experience. So, all right, so let, let's see what you guys are saying uh, about Roslevec here. I'm not seeing anything official yet, but it is 3 o'clock now, so the deadline is has come. Um, yeah, I mean, I, there's a lot of people talking about it. I'm, I'm not seeing anything completely official, but I'll take your guys' word for it at this point. If that's it, man, th this is a very, very, very underwhelming trade deadline for the New York Rangers. I don't think there's any two ways about it. There were some really good players out there that were available for this team, and unfortunately, the Rangers didn't really get any of them. I mean, did they make their team a little bit better? I would say yes. You know, uh, Wenberg gives you a little bit more depth. So too does Jack Roslevec, but I don't know, man. This, I mean, let's let's look at Roslevec's career numbers here because I, I think we're going to be very collectively underwhelmed here together. So four seasons with the Jets for Roslevec, or parts of four seasons. You know, the, the first season, he only played one game. But parts of four seasons with the Jets, parts of four seasons with the Blue Jackets, uh, eight total seasons in the NHL, 426 games, 77 goals, 136 assists, so 213 points. So right on the nose, a half point per game player. He's also a minus 26 in that time. Average is only 14 minutes and 18 seconds of ice time for his career. Uh, and then not a good face-off guy either. 43.2% for his career, uh, 268 hits, 163 takeaways against 196 giveaways. I don't know, man. I, I hope I'm wrong. You know what? Drury, he does seem to find a way to, to get guys at the deadline that were undervalued. We saw that a couple of years ago with Frank Vetrano. Um, you know, they, they paid a little bit for Andrew Kopp, but Kopp also produced for the Rangers, I think, a lot better than a lot of us thought he would. Certainly, he was going to be a good defensive forward for the Rangers, but, you know, he uh, he chipped in offensively a heck of a lot more than I think a lot of people were expecting. Uh, you know, Tyler Mott has, has played a role the last two deadlines that he's come over for the Rangers, but nothing to get super excited about here. 40 games this year for Rosovic with the Jackets, six goals, 17 assists, 23 points. He's a minus nine. Averaging 16 minutes and 33 seconds of ice time. That is a career high. Got to figure that'll drop. Now that he's joining a better team uh, in the Rangers. And just 41.9% on the dot. Although, I don't know. Has he been playing a different position this season? Maybe you guys in the chat can let me know. I I don't know. This, uh, this is not good, man. <laughs> you know, the Rangers, they were, they're in a position where they should have been aggressive at the deadline this season. I'm not going to say that like, oh, they should have just, you know, traded away a first and Brandon Othman and Capo Caco just to bring in Frank Vetrano. I think that's a bridge too far, but I, I feel like there were ways to bring in, you know, a, a pretty solid player and the Rangers did not do that. Unless of course, you know, we find out that, you know, maybe something has happened here at the deadline and we just haven't gotten word of it yet. Um, yeah, it looks like Roslevic is playing some right wing this season. So maybe that's your lineup. Maybe you go, maybe the top line gets Roslevic. You go Kreider, Mika Roslevic. Um, I don't think they're going to break up the Panarin line. Maybe the third line is something like, I mean, you got to figure Cooley's going to be third line left wing. He's been there all year. He'll probably stay there. I don't think they brought over Wenberg and gave up a second round pick for him and a fourth round pick to have him on the fourth line. So maybe Wenberg is your center on that third line and then probably Kako or Kako stays with Mika and Kreider and Roslevic plays on the third line. And then your fourth line any number of, I mean, Goodrow will be there. Um, VZ will be there. Probably, I would say off the top of my head, Brodzinski. Maybe this pushes Rempe and uh, Edstrom out of the lineup. Uh, there could be a little bit of a, uh, you know, a uh, rotation there of some kind. You know, maybe certain guys are in the lineup on certain nights and certain guys are in the lineup on other nights. And as far as the return for Rosovic, uh, per Frank Saravelli, it looks like they are getting him in exchange for a mid-round pick in 2026. So I will say this, the price was right, but man, you talk about just clinging tightly to your prospects and team uh, clinging tightly to your draft picks. 
not feeling it, man. And I know a lot of you guys are upset as well. We're getting a ton of comments here. And again, I thank you guys for tuning in uh, for this. All I ask is to try to, I know you're upset. I know there's some people not happy about this. Count me among you, you know, this deadline here, but try to keep things uh, PG in the comments section, at least. We'll go back a little bit here. I'm going to scroll up and uh, yeah, the comments are coming fast and furious here. So I don't know. Why don't we start at, uh, we'll start at like 255. There's no way maybe I'll get through all of these, but uh, yeah, Michael, I saw Michael Giovanni letting me know that Roslevic under the wire here. Uh, a bunch of you guys chipped in as well. Alex B says tossed in the season. I'm not going to go that far, man. You know, again, this was uh, a very underwhelming deadline for the New York Rangers. And I think you guys have every right to be upset. I'm not happy about it either. I will say this Ranger team right now, what's their record right now? Like 20, like 40, 18 and like four or something like that. I don't know it off the top of my head. So I'm going to pull up the stains real quick here. The Rangers are 40, 18, and four. And they've done that with a team that is not quite as good as the team that they have now. I, I know this is underwhelming, but I do think adding Wenberg and adding Rossovec and maybe even Ruedel, I, I don't think he's going to be in the lineup most nights, but it does make the team incrementally better. The problem is that we were looking for a big splash. And I think this team deserved a big splash. This team is having an awesome season. If you take away the month of January, they have been phenomenal from coast to coast so far. And that being the case, I, I think you got to push those chips in and you got to go out and get somebody, at least one player that's going to make a big time impact on this team. We saw a lot of the Rangers contenders get a lot better. You know, the, the jets have been active. I mean, I know they're the Western conference, but the jets have been active. Uh, I believe the Canucks uh, before the deadline made a couple of moves. We saw the Panthers add Tarasenko. We saw the Carolina hurricanes add Jake Gensel. And you're the Rangers, and man, all they get is Jack Roslevic. That is uh, certainly disappointing, to say the very least, uh, on, on deadline day, that is. You know, Jack Roslevic is probably the biggest addition that they made here. Um, yeah, I mean, let, let me refresh here. I just want to see if anybody else ended up getting traded. I get the feeling Vitrano probably stayed put, and it looks like that is indeed the case. A couple of uh, minor moves here at the, the Bell. Doesn't even look like the NHL.com. I mean, there were probably a couple of moves right at the end there, so they're probably still in the process of updating this page here. But, yeah, I don't know. So, anyway, let's keep going through your comments here. I want to uh, go ahead and see what how you guys are feeling. Boxing fan 5555 says they got Roslevic for who? And, again, it does sound like it will be a mid-round pick in 2026. But, you know, we'll see, uh, we'll see what round that ends up being. Um, let's see what else we got here. Greg Similuka, I hope I'm saying that right, says Pacioretty staying in Washington. Again, I would have preferred Pacioretty over Roslevic. You know, I know there's some injury issues there over the years. I feel like, though, there's more upside with Pacioretty. Again, it was not long ago, just two years ago, where this guy was still, you know, flirting with point-per-game status, and he's gotten healthy with Washington this year, and he's starting to contribute a little bit more offensively. I don't think it would have taken anything to land him. I think, uh, you know, having another sniper on your team is certainly a nice thing as well. I think Pacioretty would have been a nice fit on that second power play unit. You know, he could kind of play the Mika role where you set him up and just bombs away. Um, yeah, and, and they didn't do that. They get Jack Roslevic instead. Uh, let's see. What else do we have here? Michael Giovanni says, we were outsmarted by the Canes. I mean, the Canes had a better deadline than the Rangers. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Um, what else do we have here? Blake Wheeler's burner account says, bro, WTH are we doing? LOL. Yeah, I, my sentiments exactly. Dot Connector says, does jury work for the other teams? No, but this is not his finest moment. I, I think we can probably all agree on that. Uh, let's see what else is everybody saying. Corona Finest says, does jury know WTF he's doing? Desperately need another right winger. This team will not go far uh, with only one line scoring. And that's true. And that's another uh, thing that we're going to have to debate on episodes of Locked on New York Rangers going forward here because I don't want the Rangers to touch that line of, of Panarin and Trocek and Lafreniere because they've been awesome. They've clicked so well together, and they shouldn't have to mess with that line. But if the top line keeps going, the, the top line, quote-unquote, keeps going the way that it's been going, at a certain point, you're not going to have a choice because if you go into the playoffs and there's only one line that you can really rely on for any kind of offense, I don't know how far you're going to go. I, I mean, you like to think that eventually Mika and Kreider can flip that switch. Maybe the playoffs are the time for that. But, I mean, we're 
getting near the end of the season here and they just haven't done it, at least not 5v5. I don't want to make it sound like you know, they don't do anything. Those guys, they go out there, they kill penalties. Um, they log big time minutes every night. And they've had times this season where it looks like they're going to get it rolling, but um, both of them having underwhelming seasons. One thing I'll say, though, to kind of, because I know some people are upset about this, and, and rightfully so. Again, the Rangers have a phenomenal record, and they did it with a team that is not quite as good as the team that they have right now. So maybe they can keep it going. Maybe they can still r- make a run at this thing. But, man, if they're in a playoff series and, you know, they they lose in a game seven by one goal and, and one or two big players could have made a big-time difference in a series like that, maybe it's like a tight, low-scoring series and um, it just doesn't go their way. I mean, we're going to look back and really lament this trade deadline. Well, let's see who else we got here. We got BX Big Shot. There's a lot of WTF in uh in the chat here. So I appreciate you guys at least censoring it and not saying the word. But WTF, we were better off keeping our picks and going into the playoffs with what we got. Um, I'll disagree there. I I do think that this is very underwhelming, everything that the Rangers did here. But I do think they got incrementally better. I, I I mean, if you're giving up like a fourth rounder or whatever it ends up being for Roslevic, there's nothing like horribly wrong about that. A fourth rounder three years from now for Ruedel, I mean, who cares? Um, the second and the fourth for, for Wenberg felt a little bit steep. My thing with Wenberg was, okay, this is fine. I'm not in love with it, but this dude can't be the biggest, you know, impact player that the Rangers bring in at the deadline. And he kind of was. I mean, he probably put Roslevic, well... I don't know. Who do you guys think is, is the better pickup between the two, Rosovec or Winberg? I'd be curious to hear uh, what everybody thinks there. Uh, the Thomas J just says, this is bad. Yeah, not ideal. Um, let's see who else we got here. <laughs> the dot, con- dot connector thinks it's over. He says that, or he or she or whoever says the drought continues. Um, Toronto four lets us know that uh, Rosovic has been on Columbus's first line. He might be there for the Rangers too, because again, they've tried literally everybody else on that top line with Mika and with Kreider. Uh, NHL NYR ninety one twenty says it's official. What a waste! Talking about the Rosovic trade, I can only assume. Um, John Harmon says we lost serious ground at this deadline. Uh, Nathan Estep says sent link in DM to your personal. Uh, I will check that out later for sure. Um, let's see what else we got here. Brooklyn says, sounds like they're really betting on the existing core this year, huh? I mean, that's one way to look at it. Maybe this in a roundabout way is a uh, vote of confidence in the core. But to me, if you really truly believe in this team and you really have confidence in them, then you push your chips in and you give them every chance, every opportunity to take the ball and run with it and go on a deep playoff run. And the way you do that is you part with a couple of things, man. You, you part with a prospect, you part with a draft pick. There's no guarantees, man. You know, I, the, the Rangers have a lot of prospects that I really like. Um, there's certain guys that I don't think they should be trading for, you know, Vetrano or, or like Zucker or Eberly or guys like that. But man, you know, the, the deal was there to be had. There, there were a lot of deals out there to be had. Uh, Zucker is the one that's going to drive me crazy though. The fact that it was only a six rounder for him and, um, you know, that they just didn't make it happen. Uh, a lot of people sarcastically saying, thanks, Drury. Now, Toronto 04 uh, seems a little bit higher on Roslovic than maybe a couple of us. He says, Roslovic isn't a star, but he is a good player. I mean, he's all right. You know, I hope he can come in here and, and make some kind of an impact. Um, John Harmon says, literally, what are we saving this picks for or these picks for? We draft terribly anyway. 30 years since a cup. Needed to go all in. This is sad. I will say this, and I I tweeted this out a little bit earlier today. I feel like now that the Rangers, see, I was going to say that they need to call it Brennan often, but I feel like these players that they brought in are going to keep the Rangers from doing that. You know, Rosovic and and Wenberg are taking two roster spots and they're solid players, but they're not like those guys that come in and make a big splash. I mean, Brennan often, we could debate whether that's the right move or not. We could debate whether he's truly ready for big time and ready for the Rangers. But now I don't think there's going to be any way that they call him up between now and the end of the season. And if the Rangers weren't going to do anything, I almost would have preferred them giving Offman a shot over Rosovic. Maybe that's crazy. You know, Rosovic's been in the NHL for a long time, but you know, Offman, maybe he comes up and gives the team a spark. I don't know. I mean, I would have liked to have at least seen uh, what, what he could have done. Uh, but we're not going to get that chance now. It would not appear. Uh, boxing fan says, I really wanted the Rangers to get Buchnevich. 
that would have been cool. But again, I just don't think Drury was ever going to swallow his pride and swallow his pride, excuse me, in that type of a way. And uh, indeed, he did not. And again, the, the asking price, I'm sure, was very, very high for Buchnevich. And unless I missed it, uh, I don't think uh, Buchnevich was traded at all. So I'm just going to go ahead and scour Twitter here and see if there's any other information, see uh, which round it was that the Rangers gave up to bring in Rosovic. Uh Not seeing anything as of now. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. <laughs> it's the other crazy thing, too. I was thinking about this the other day. Like, the Rangers this year, phenomenal record. There's times where they've had the best record in the NHL. Um, I think they've fallen quite, you know, slightly off that pace, but they're still up there. And they're doing it while a lot of really important players are having a season that is not their career best. I think Mika Zibanejad fits that description. I think that uh, Chris Kreider certainly fits that description. Igor Shesterkin, 100% fits that description. Some of the defensemen as well. I don't know that Miller has been in his absolute best this season. Um, you know, and that being the case, you know, I, I feel like, you know, adding to this team really would have helped them. And maybe at some point you just kind of bank on those players eventually playing up to their capabilities, whether we're talking Igor, whether we're talking Mika, Kreider, a couple of these other guys as well. And you have that to look forward to, hopefully. And you also have another, you know, impact player on your team, to me, that would have been a recipe for success and a deep run in the uh, in the playoffs. And uh, at least one person wanted the Rangers to trade Kako. Frank Lareda says, Drury is making a mistake not trading Kako. He will be an average player at best. Yeah, for me, I wouldn't trade Kako just to do it, you know, at the deadline this season. But if Capo Kako, you know, if the Penguins wanted him and, and the Rangers could have had Gensel, and we might never know for sure, and it's possible that, the Penguins just were not going to send Gensel to the Rangers. But if Kako was, you know, the, the thing that the Penguins really needed for the Rangers to get Gensel, I think I'm probably doing it. I mean, it depends what else the Rangers are sending there. But, I mean, you can win a Stanley Cup bring in Jake Gensel. And, and you know, Kako, he's still here. He's had his moments as a Ranger. But the dude's got 11 points in 41 games this season. And it's his fifth year in the league. I know he's had some bad luck. I know he's had some injuries. But geez, man, you know, like if you have a chance to win the Stanley Cup, and I'm not so sure that Capo Caco is like a ranger for life anyway. I mean, at a certain point, you know, the salary cap's expected to go up in the offseason, but at a certain point, you know, you you kind of just run out of run out of cap space. You know, you can't keep everybody. And at a certain point, is Capo Caco gonna be worth whatever the Rangers might have to pay him? I, I just don't know that that's gonna be the case. Um Tron 04 also points out that they sent Rempe and Edstrom down to the Wolfpack. Yeah, I mean, you figured that was going to happen. Part of that was, uh, my understanding is that by doing that, those two are both now eligible to play in the Calder playoffs, you know, in the AHL this season. And I also believe that by doing that, you know, if the Rangers had left them on the roster, then they, you know, passed the deadline today, then they would no longer be able to send one of them down to the AHL, which, you know, you want that flexibility. You want to be able to do that if you can. But honestly, after bringing in these players, it's possible that they're both down there for a while. I mean, they, they might be down there for good for all I know. It's hard to say for sure. You know, we'll look at the roster and we'll look at the cap space and can they add an extra forward to the to the roster, you know, going forward here. The playoffs, uh, my understanding is that, you know, you could pretty much do whatever you want at that point. We've seen teams take advantage of that in the past. So I can see Rempe and Edstrom uh, at least being added to the roster at that point. But, uh, yeah, you guys are doing comments faster than I can uh, keep up with them here. But, um, uh, yeah, Boxing Fan, he he's, I, I guess, Boxing Fan is somewhat content with what happened. He, he was responding to Frank here. The Rangers did their best. It's not good trading away all your top prospects. And he's right, but the Rangers didn't trade away any of their prospects. I mean, is every prospect on this team, guys that they took in the fourth round, guys that they took in the sixth round, guys that are two, three, four years away from being in the NHL, are all these guys off limits? I mean, you could trade somebody. I'm not saying you got it's got to be Perot and Offman, but, you know, somebody could be on the move. I'm a big Brett Berard fan. I think, um, you know, he's somebody that has some, uh, some sneaky upside, you know, for, for somebody that they got in the fifth round, I want to say. But, you know, if... Um, if they could have moved him and gotten somebody impactful, I, I wouldn't say no to that. You know, it, it's what do you do with all these guys at a certain point? You know, you, you run out of places to put them. Let me go to some of the more recent comments, because like I said, they're coming in fast and furious here. Uh, Dirk Zink says, I hope they send Brodzinski to the minors. Um, I don't think I would do that. I mean, to begin with, he would have to pass through waivers. And 
I don't want to risk him being claimed by a division rival or something along those lines. Not that he's like this phenomenal superstar player, but you know, he's solid. He's done a nice job. And I, I don't think Brodzinski really deserves that. Uh, Michael Giovanni says players like get Gensel gets is gets for Gensel are never available. Very disappointing. It's even worse that he goes to the Canes and, and, you know, obviously both teams have to get there first, but it's entirely possible that the Rangers and Canes end up playing each other in round two. Um, and now instead of Gensel playing for you, he's going to be playing for a team that um, is always a problem in the playoffs. I know the Rangers beat them a couple of years ago, and I think they can beat them again, but it's certainly not going to be easy. And the fact that Gensel not only is not with you, but he's on the opposing team, that just makes it that much more difficult. Uh, what else we got here? Paul Volpe says, you can't just call up a rookie. LOL. They added hard to play against players for the bottom role. Yeah. I mean, Wenberg for sure. I mean, he's one of those guys. I, I see a little bit of Andrew cop in Wenberg. I feel like he's somebody that's coming over here mostly for his defense, but maybe, um, you know, the Rangers can unlock something in him offensively. We saw that with cop. Now, of course, with cop, it's a little bit different. He's playing on the same line as Artemi Panarin. And what happened to him is the same thing that happens to everybody that plays with Artemi Panarin. Uh, but nevertheless, you know, he did get a little bit more offense. Maybe the same thing uh, can happen for Winberg. We'll see. Uh, Rosovic, you know, I, I guess, you know, he's somebody that's tough to play against, but you know, we'll see how they go. Uh, the Rat Pack Days official says, if they demote Rempe, I'm done. He's our only energy. Well, they did demote him. And I, I don't know if it's just for the purposes of that being, you know, a paper transaction right now for the reasons that I just mentioned a couple of minutes ago. It's possible we see him back. You know, I, uh, I'd i like to see Rempe in the lineup. I, I don't know. The, the playoffs might be a little bit scary because he is so inexperienced and the playoffs are a whole different ballgame. But obviously he gives this team a jolt, you know, when he drops the gloves and he's shown, uh, you know, over the handful of games that he's been there that he's certainly ready, willing, and able uh, to do that. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Jeremy Camacho says, Canes, Florida, two teams that are in the Rangers' way of winning a cup and now have leveled up better for a playoff run. Very disappointing. Yeah, I think Florida, they got somebody else in addition to Tarasenko, didn't they? I, I'm having a, I think the Canes might have too. It's hard to keep up with this. I'm so focused in on the Rangers that uh, it's easy to miss something that some other teams are doing. But yeah, man, I mean, a lot of teams got significantly better. The Rangers got a little bit better. I don't think significantly better. And you know, if the reason for it is they're just clinging too tightly to prospects, to draft picks, whatever it might be, then that's uh, very disappointing. I'm not saying to empty your entire cupboard, but I mean, the Rangers, they have a really good roster right now. They've got Offman coming along. They've got Sakura coming along. Pro will eventually get here, you know, possibly as soon as next year, probably the year after that might be a little bit more realistic. Brett Berard is really emerging. I mean, can they not part with anybody, anybody at all? Maybe you can send a defenseman in a trade. You know, Matthew Robertson, maybe, although it sounds like his uh, his arrow is kind of pointed down in recent seasons. Um, let's see what else we got here. Paul Volpe says, your star players need to be your star players. We have enough of them. This wasn't a horrible deadline. People need to relax. This team is 40 and 18 and got a good, solid bottom six. I feel that, man. And to Paul's point, um, you know, you look at what the Rangers did last year. They went for the big names. They went for the superstar players. They bring in Vladimir Tarasenko. They bring in Patrick Kane. And what happens? I mean, the first two games were awesome against the Devils. And then everything fell apart and they got knocked out in the first round. Even so, I, I think the Rangers could have done a little bit more than they did at the deadline this season. Boxing fan 5555 says the pens are stupid. Well, yeah, maybe. I don't, I don't know. I mean, it, that return that they got for uh, Gensel felt a little bit underwhelming. If I'm a Penguins fan, which clearly I am not. I mean, I, I root for any team in the league over that team. But, yeah, I don't know. They got a conditional first. I want to say a conditional fourth. A former second-round pick. Another former second-round pick. A former fourth or fifth-round pick. You know, something like that. And, of course, Michael Bunting. Bunting is a good player. And, um, you know, he's he's a better offensive player than you might realize. Because if you think of Bunting, you just think of him being a pain in the butt to play against. Which he is. And I think... Uh, He's one of those guys, you know, Ranger fans are going to love to hate him when the Rangers are playing the Penguins. But, yeah, you know, for Gensel, a, a guy that's a cup champion and a uh, proven playoff performer, he's got, I want to say, 58 points exactly in 58 playoff games. Right on the nose, a point-per-game player. Um, You think back to 
that series between the Rangers and the Penguins a couple of years ago in the playoffs in the first round. I mean, look, he's playing with Crosby, and I'm sure he benefits from that, and that's all well and good. But that line of Gensel and Crosby and Rust, I mean, they were like uncontrollable for the first half of that series. But between the Rangers and the Penguins a few years ago, you had to hold your breath every time they were out there. And, you know, I mean, I, I think Gensel's going to have a big-time impact on the Canes. The Canes are one of those teams that it seems like in recent years, they kind of did what the Rangers They've been doing what the Rangers did this year, which is they shied away from you know, the big time player, the big time impact player. You know, they'll add a, a player or two, but I feel like, you know, Canes fans have probably been underwhelmed by their deadlines in recent years. And um, not so this year. Graham Shaw says Ocposo went to Florida. Yeah, they got him for basically nothing. A seventh that can become a fifth if they uh, win the Stanley Cup. I wasn't that high on Ocposo. I mean, I don't know. I guess for like a fourth line center, he could be fine, but. Not exactly a major impact player um, at this point either, which I think you can say the same for some of the players that the Rangers brought in here. Uh, Let's see what boxing fan has here. Keep this in mind. If the Rangers gave the Penguins a first Offman or Perot and Kako, they will be playing against the Rangers. The Penguins are our rivals. Yeah, no, 100%. I I agree with that. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't give up all those things. You know, a first Offman slash Pro and Kako. I, I think I might give up two of those things, though. I'd take Pro off the table. Would I give up a first and Kako for Gensel? It's a tough call, but I, I think I would have done it, man. I mean, you got you got a chance to win the Stanley Cup, and Gensel gives you such a better chance of doing that. One thing that nobody talked about when it came to Gensel, though, and I'll throw this out there. We talk about team chemistry, right? Jake Gensel has been on the Penguins. There has been no love lost between the Rangers and the Penguins over the last handful of seasons. Things have gotten really ugly, really nasty. That playoff series was an absolute dogfight. There was a game in the regular season where there was basically a brawl at the end of the game, and both teams were kind of at the red lines, you know, staring each other down at the end of that game. I remember in that playoff series distinctly, uh, during a play stoppage, Jake Gensel sucker punched Adam Fox in the back of the head. Now, would everybody on the Rangers let bygones be bygones? And Hey, whatever, this guy's one of us now, and um, he can help us win a Stanley Cup, so forget about it. Uh, Forget everything that happened. I I think that's probably likely, but, I mean, do any of you guys actually like Jake Gensel? You know, that's the one thing I'll throw out there if you want to feel just a little bit better about this. But I'm mostly in the camp of, yeah, I'd give up a pretty good amount to get him, Uh, even with those concerns being there, you know, team chemistry and what have you. um, I, I do think that, you know, bring him in, greatly, greatly increases your chances of winning a Stanley Cup. And we are talking about a team that, you know, has won Stanley Cup in 84 years. And I know you don't want to, again, you know, give up everything at the deadline, but how much farther are we going to kick this can down the road? If you don't go all in this year, you're going to go all in next year. I mean, are the Rangers going to have as good of a record next year as they have right now? And even if they do, will they be in first place by six points on the next closest team like they are right now? The entire core will be one year older. Panarin will be a year older. You know, Zibanejad, not that they're like ancient, you know, they'll they'll have, they've still got a shot this year. There's no doubt about that. And they'll have a shot next year at the very least. At the very least, this championship window is open for this year and next year, despite an underwhelming deadline here. But as far as when to go all in, will there be a better time than right now? I, I personally don't think so. Um, so yeah, to, to get back to boxing fans comment here. Yeah, I think I would give up a first and Kako. I think I also would have given up a first and Offman. I'm not giving up Perot, and I would not give up three of those assets. Like, I would not give up a first and Offman and Kako. That, that's too much, and maybe that's what the Penguins wanted. Again, entirely possible that the Penguins were never going to give us Gensel unless the Rangers absolutely just, just crushed every other offer, and uh, maybe then they would have considered it. But I don't know. I mean, the Penguins... They got to rebuild, and um, I, I would think they would take the best offer to do that. You know, they, they've got some bad contracts and obviously some aging core players, and, you know, to me, that they owe it to themselves. Even if that means sending Gensel to their rival, um, so be it. You know, I, I feel like they would uh, they would have to do that. Question from KJ Sandoli here. I'll get to this in just a second. Uh, KJ says, do you think they would bring Perot up from BC like they did Kreider? who had a good playoff. I hadn't really thought about that, but no, I I don't think that that would happen. And there are eligibility rules that I have to look up. The Kreider situation was wild. And and for anybody that might not remember, or maybe wasn't even a Ranger fan at that time, you're a younger fan now, or um, you just weren't into hockey back then. 
Um, so Kreider was playing at BC in college and the Rangers had already drafted him in the first round and he wins a national championship there. And like a day later, he's playing on the Rangers in game two of their first round playoff series. I want to say that was the year they played the senators in the first round and Kreider basically hit the ground running and played well in that playoff run. Um, could the Rangers do something like that? I mean, it, it, I give you credit KJ for thinking outside the box a little bit here. But again, there's eligibility rules, and, and they may have even changed since that situation with Kreider. I know there had to be some kind of a ruling where it was determined that Kreider was indeed eligible. So again, I would have to go and look that up and uh, see if that's a possibility. And I'm not sure, even if it's like literally possible, I don't know that the Rangers would do it. I don't know if they feel like uh, Pro would be ready for prime time like that. But I mean, they did it with Kreider, so I suppose never say never. But that is, that is definitely an interesting comment. Uh, let's see what else we get here. Toronto four says, watch the Canes or Panthers get bounced in the first round. The NHL playoffs are unpredictable. Well, you were a hundred percent right about that. Uh, you never know what can happen. You know, the Rangers put together what we thought was a super team and uh, it didn't really work out. Obviously we saw, you know, a couple of recent teams that had historical regular seasons, the, the Bruins last year and the lightning about five, six years ago, somewhere in that ballpark. Uh, both had incredible regular season records and both teams got knocked out in the first round and the lightning got swept. They got swept by the blue jackets, the Artemi Panarin led blue jackets. So you never know for sure what can happen. And look, it's not like, I don't want to make it sound like it's all doom and gloom here. The Rangers added some decent players at the deadline season here and they have a heck of a team to begin with. So they've got a shot at it in the playoffs. I just think that a lot of us, uh, were, you know, hoping for a little bit more. Uh, Melina Bellotti says needed to get bigger on defense and we did not. Well, Kunakel's a pretty big guy, isn't he? I mean, I, 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 I get what you're saying because probably, um, you know, you'd be looking for a defenseman who would slot right into the starting lineup, um, or maybe even like a defensive forward with some size, whatever the case might be. Um, yeah, the, the Rangers really did not do that. I mean, Kunakel probably won't even be in the lineup. So definitely get what you're saying there. I don't think that was the biggest priority for the Rangers, but, you know, adding a defenseman that could maybe push Gustafson for that sixth defenseman spot. That's something the Rangers could have done. To me, the biggest need was a big time top of the line right winger. There were players available. Rosovic's okay. He's listed as a center. It looks like he's got to play wing for the Rangers. But um, again, not all that close to uh, the top of my uh, personal list here. Johnny Reno says, only good thing is that is that they haven't traded prospects and good picks, but every other team made deals and are now better. Yeah, I mean, look, if you like the Ranger prospect, you're you're a big fan of Othman, you, you love Perot, you, I mean, Berard maybe, Sikora, then, I mean, that that's the silver lining here. Is those guys are still uh, intact. Those guys are still in place, and they may one day become big-time players for the New York Rangers. So I think that's the, uh, the best thing you can say here. Uh, let's see what else we got here. <laughs> Michael Giovanni says, maybe we will get another rebuild letter, LOL. Well, I hope not. I... I hope they're they're not even thinking about a rebuild right now because that window is open. You guys can everybody can be mad and upset. And again, I'm underwhelmed by this deadline too. But uh, the chance to win a Stanley Cup is still 100 on the table uh, so far this season. Uh, the rest of this season. Uh, what else we got here? I want to get a couple other names here. Vincent Flato says we have proven playoff performers that will step up in the playoffs. I'm sure of it. And we just got deeper at center. And on our bottom six, so I think we improved. Yeah, they improved. That they they improved, but they just didn't improve. Um, I don't think in a major way, like I think a lot of us were hoping for them to do. Everybody has, you know, their favorite trade target and whatnot, and a lot of people were, you know, looking to to bring in a big time bona fide right winger, and they didn't really do that. Again, it's nothing against Wenberg, it's nothing against Roslovic. They're fine players. They're complementary players. I do think they make this team better, but. It could have been, there could have been more done by the Rangers at the deadline this season. But that is a good point uh, from Vincent. Graham Shaw says, in, in Shesty, we trust. Yeah, I'd say so. We, I mean, Igor is the biggest X factor come playoff times because if we get Vesna winning Igor, this team can win it all. That's not an exaggeration. That's not hyperbole. If we get Igor that we saw a little bit earlier this season, I mean, it seems like he's playing better recently for sure. But if we get the Igor that we've gotten at times this season, certainly in the month of January, then uh, I think the Rangers are in a lot of trouble. And um, you, you've got quick there. You know, you could always throw him in there if Igor struggles. But, I mean, to me, 
this team is going to go about as far as Igor Shesterkin will take it. I mean, obviously, there's other factors there too, but none bigger than Igor Shesterkin. Uh, anyone else we want to get to? We're going we're to wrap it up pretty soon here. We've gone over an hour. But again, thank you guys so much for, for tuning in here. And for any new listeners, I'm sure we got at least a few today because obviously it's a very exciting day. And, uh, you know, Ranger fans are very passionate. They want to get their, their information in real time. And that's what we're doing here uh, with this live episode. But for anybody that might be new, once again, please uh, do remember to like the, po- the this episode and also subscribe to the podcast. Uh, we got a fun little Ranger community that we're building here. And very listener-inclusive show, and like I said, new episode every single day. A lot of phenomenal Ranger podcasts out there. We're the only one that's daily, though, so uh, if you want to get your daily Ranger fix, uh, this is the place to to go to, and again, thank you guys so much for joining uh, here today, and again, if uh, a like of this uh, episode and a subscription, uh, that would be awesome as well, and and for the everydayers, the, the people that show up every day, again, can't thank you guys enough. It's really been awesome to, again, grow this uh, little Ranger community that we have here, and uh, just laugh and cry and, and talk Ranger hockey together, uh, you know, throughout the everything that happens in, in the NHL calendar. Uh, okay, Jackson says, I'm disappointed that Drury was unable to bring in a prominent right winger for our top line. Roslovic is interesting, but will it be enough to make a major impact? We'll see. You know, I, again, I, I'm somewhat underwhelmed by some of these names that the Rangers uh, brought in here. But, you know, maybe we'll talk to uh, we'll talk to Jay from Locked On Jackets to find out a little bit more about Jack Rosovic. I, I wouldn't mind getting uh, getting Jay's opinion on that. Um, I reached out to Erica from Locked On Kraken as well. If, if she's able to do it, I'd love to talk to her about uh, Wenberg. You know, we'll, we'll see what they both think. And, um, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll see how it goes there. Um, John Harmon says, if every core if every core guy plays better than they did all year and Chesty stands on his head, we have a small shot. LOL. I think they have more than a small shot. You know, we'll, we'll see. Um, Frank Lareda says, why do we trade for two centers? I think at least one of them is going to play right wing. Um, I, I had the same initial reaction. Cause I always think of Roslovic as a center, but I guess he's been playing right wing for the jackets and certainly he can do that. So between, Wenberg and Rosovic, you have two guys that can both play center or right wing. So if nothing else, nice to have that versatility. I know some people have been on Barclay Goodrow this season, but he brings some versatility. Uh, he can play any of the three forward positions. Jimmy Vesey, we know, can play left wing or right wing. So that shouldn't be a problem. They should be able to make the pieces fit, at least in terms of uh, position versatility is concerned. Uh, let's see. Capo Costco. Great question here. Do we now believe this Dolan first round pick rumor was true? That's an excellent question. <sighs> I got to think about this one. So for, for anybody that might not you know be familiar with what Capo is talking about here, there was a report out there, and I forget which reporter had it, but it was that Dolan did not want the Rangers to trade their first round draft pick this season. And on one hand, you first hear that, and it's like, well, Okay, I mean, what are what are his reasons there? Like, is he looking at the draft class, and does he think that there's a big time impact player that you know the Rangers that he has his eye on that he wants the Rangers to draft? Well, of course not. It's the stupidest reason imaginable, which is that the draft is in the Sphere next year in Vegas. You know that that crazy new venue that they've got there, that the big dome, um, and that's where the draft is being held. And the rumor is that Dolan wants the Rangers to have their first round draft pick because he wants them to be a part of those festivities. And I, I think Dolan even owns the Sphere. But that's the dumbest reason I've ever heard for anyone to do anything. And there was another report from Larry Brooks where he kind of refuted that and said, no, that's not true. The Rangers would trade their first round draft pick if they had to. Somebody's wrong. And, you know, the Rangers not willing or not ultimately parting with this first round pick at this year's deadline. That's only going to pour fuel on the fire there as far as people believing that that really was the reason that, you know, Dolan wants to, to make a show during the draft next year in the sphere. And it's like, who the hell even cares? I, I just don't even get why that was ever even an issue. You know, if you don't have a first round pick, you don't have a first round pick, but yeah, I mean, you might be onto something there. That might be very true as far as why the Rangers didn't move a first for a guy like Vetrano, a guy like Buchnevich, one of these other players that was available, you know, Gensel, maybe even who knows. Uh, Matt Matheson says, how much of an impact will quick have in the playoffs? Depends. I mean, if nothing else, he'll be a good presence in the locker room. I, I know that a lot of players in the Vegas locker room last year spoke very highly of him. 
and spoke very highly of, you know, just, just his veteran leadership. Aiden Hill was the Knights goalie for most of their games and their run to the cup. He spoke very highly of Jonathan Quick. So if nothing else, you have a veteran that's been there and done that and um, can probably, uh, you know, impart some veteran wisdom on the rest of the room. If Quick is making an impact on the ice, though, that's a little scary. Not that Quick can't handle it because he's had a great season, but it would probably suggest that Igor, you know, doesn't have it in the playoffs. And if that's the case, again, if the Rangers are going to be the last team standing and they're going to go through four rounds and they're going to beat all these different teams, then I have to believe that it's going to be Igor Shesterkin and not Jonathan Quick leading the way. Now, if Igor, maybe, maybe Igor one night just doesn't have it and, and he gets hooked and, and Quick goes in and settles everything down and the Rangers stage a comeback in whatever game that might be, maybe Quick can make an impact in that way. That could create a goalie controversy for the next game. I mean, who knows? There, there's a lot of different ways it can uh, it can go, but at the very least, Quick should at least uh, have an impact on the uh, you know, the morale of the locker room. And again, it's another multiple-time Stanley Cup champion in there and a guy that has been there and done that and once again can, can kind of be that big brother to a lot of different players uh, on this team. BX Big Shot says, let's be honest, this team isn't winning at all. Well, we'll see. I mean, look, the, the odds are against any team winning at all because 16 teams are getting into the playoffs and 15 of them are going to be disappointed. So if you look at it that way, the odds are against any one team winning it. The Rangers have a heck of a team. Are they the favorites? I think they could have been had they done this or done that at the deadline. Right now, I would say probably not. But if you look at the Eastern Conference, I do think it's wide open. I know that a lot of people are scared of the Panthers, and I get that. You know, they went to the finals last year, and that is a very complete, very well-rounded team that seems to do all the little things well, seems to defend very well. Uh, Bobrovsky's having a phenomenal season. If Kachuk does anything close to what he did in the playoffs last year, then I, I think the entire league is in some trouble. Um, and again, a very deep team. So I, I see them being an issue. The Bruins, you know, we'll see. They have a very good team, but they lost a lot of players from last year and they didn't even get out of the first round last year. So who's to say for sure? And the Canes, you got to be aware of the Canes. And you know what? There's probably some dark horse team in the East, the West, whatever it might be that, you know, we're not even thinking of right now. We don't see them as like a major threat. I mean, think of a few years ago, the COVID year, the Montreal Canadiens who, were under 500, had like the 23rd best record in the league and eat their way into the playoffs because of the realigned divisions. And they end up in the Stanley Cup final. So you never know for sure. I really do think this sport more than any other. Uh, if you get in, you've at least got a shot at it. So, I mean, the Rangers have a chance that they they are going to be one of the top dogs going in. At the very worst, they'll finish second in the Metro. They'll be uh, at home in the first round. I, I think they still can and will win the Metro division. So they're going to have a shot at it just like anybody else. Uh, what else we got? Any thoughts into how Wenberg, this comes from K McGregor 24. Any thoughts into how Wenberg going against a top line opens the door for Kreider and Zabanja to do something 5v5 against inferior lines? So if I'm understanding this correctly, the question is, I would think Wenberg on the third line, you match up that third line with some of the other team's top lines. You could do that. I mean, you could go with, you know, Wenberg on your third line. If Kako is now on your third line, we know how good he is defensively. So that's two, you know, shut down forwards. And Cooley, I, I don't think he's any slouch defensively. And if nothing else, you know, he's going to be out there looking to hit everything that moves uh, as he does. So that line could be difficult to play against. And it's possible that in games, especially when the Rangers have the last change, um, you if you're the Rangers, you match your third line up against the other team's top line and just hope that they can shut them down. If they can, that's awesome. And then it frees up the Ranger top line, Kreider, Mika, and I guess Roslovic, um, to go up against, you know, some inferior lines, like you were saying, and um, hopefully do a little bit more offensively. <clears throat> uh, Cody Cigar says, Lindgren and Truba are big liabilities. I knew, I know you can't do anything with Truba, but I wish that we bolster defense more. Yeah, I mean, to me, and I've been saying this all along, going into the deadline this year, in order for me, it was, you know, center and right wing. I kind of went back and forth on which one was a bigger need. You know, losing Philip Hedel kind of changed things for a while. I said definitely right wing. But losing Hedel for the season, that changed things a little bit. And then you lose Wheeler too. And I know Wheeler didn't have a great season, but, I mean, he's still a, a winger getting, you know, some points here and there. Um, to me, those are both more pressing needs than defense. But if nothing else, you know, they, they didn't add a defenseman other than Ruedel. But you do have 
uh, some good defensive forwards, certainly in Wenberg, and I believe in Rosovec uh, as well. So they they did a little bit defensively to get a little bit better. Um, NY Panamanian, Panamanian says, y'all need to calm down and stop being so negative. Just look at how well Cop and Vetrano did when they came in, and Cop ain't all that. Yeah, I mean, that goes back to what I was talking about. They have had uh, some some situations where they've brought in some players that are a little bit unheralded, but they seem to come in and click right away. Um, and you hope that the same thing happens now. Hockeyist guy alive says this is the first time the Rangers didn't do what they always do. I'm kind of proud. We'll see. I mean, if, if for people that really like these Ranger prospects, I think that, uh, that, you know, you're probably pretty happy about what went down today. So, you know, we'll see how it all goes. Justin Rampert says, keep a first rounder and our top prospects picking up top guys at the deadline hasn't worked for 30 years. Maybe they get it right this time. You got to remember though, that, that is a good point, but you got to remember, because I, I see this every deadline too. Everybody likes to point out that like, oh, only 4% or only 6% of the players traded at the deadline go on to win the Stanley Cup. Well, that's because there's a lot of trades happening and only one team can win the Stanley Cup. It's really just that simple. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with trying to make yourself better at the deadline. And look, I do think the Rangers did that, just not quite uh, at the level that I think a lot of us were probably hoping for. All right. I feel like we could pretty much call it there. Let me just scroll down to the bottom, maybe do like one more here. Uh, let's see. You know what? We all need to laugh right here. So I'm going to read a comment from just the comment 93. I'm just laughing at the Devils. Yeah, the Devils, well, hey, look, they won the Stanley Cup last year, right? Being the Rangers is the same thing as winning the Stanley Cup to them. They basically said that. They said that that was their Stanley Cup, and then they went out and got smoked by the Hurricanes in the next round. And I think they're in seventh place. I mean, if you can believe, no, sixth place. They're in sixth place in the Metro Division now, and um, they moved to Foley today. So uh, I'm not looking for a, a great, you know, Devils run to close out the season here. So there you go. I mean, the Rangers, at least they'll be in the playoffs. You know, they'll have home ice in the first round. And I mean, look, I'm a little underwhelmed by today. Glad that they at least added a couple players. We'll see how it goes. It's not gonna it's not gonna dull my enthusiasm as a fan. I'm not gonna be one of those people that's like, oh, I'm not watching them again this season. I mean, I kind of have to watch them. I have the podcast, but even if I didn't, I'd still be watching them and rooting for them. And maybe this is the year. I mean, to to do it on the 30 year anniversary of um, you know, the last time they won the Stanley Cup, I, I think that would really be special. So let's see how things go. I figure we could pretty much call it there. Once again, thank you guys as always for tuning in. If you'd like to get in touch with this podcast, please send an email to lockedonnyrangers at gmail.com. Once again, that is lockedonnyrangers at gmail.com. Definitely give us a follow on Twitter as well, at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. Once again, that is at LO underscore NY underscore Rangers. And definitely subscribe to the Locked On New York Rangers YouTube channel. And again, thank you guys, the everydayers who are here every day. Saw a lot of familiar names in the chat. And for everybody that's new, again, Thank you for hanging out with us. Uh, if you would be so kind as to like the episode and give us a subscription, uh, you're free to join the party here. We, we tend to have a lot of fun together. No matter uh, the Rangers are playing well, they're playing bad. Always a lot of fun talking hockey with other Ranger fans. But, yep, figure we can call it there. Uh, once again, thank you guys, as always, for tuning in, and I will see you next time.